Here we go with the seventh comedy cast. And there's still no sign of comedians coming to Paris, but I am, and this recording is being made on the vessel, the Seven Sisters, uh, somewhere out at sea between New Haven and Yep. So it's 2001 in 2021. That's 20 years ago, appropriately. And that's when the comedians, like the audience, started coming back for more. More money in some cases, but mostly more of the Parisian experience. And that's why so many of them came accompanied. First back was Phil Kay. He came back for more, more mayhem and a drama too of William Lawson Scotch, by the look of it. More spontaneous nonsense from Ross Noble, who could do no wrong in Paris, and he got the star treatment, the first color poster and a t-shirt. Canadian Derek Edwards got the shock of his life when he found out that he was the only act. Here he is in the thick of it. Making a welcome return, Dave Fulton came without his fiancee, but he brought the absence and left with some artwork. Rob or Robert Newman, he came back so he could take his hat off to what he considered to be the best comedy club in Europe. And the Charmada wasn't bad either. And the first all-female double bill with Mandy and Sally. Sally filled in for the audience one night and Sophie Ford made Mandy's night. Jim Owen had already played La Java back in 96 but here he was back for three whole nights in the Hotel du Nord. The gloves were off, or rather they were on, when uh, Graham Fellows came back with John Shuttworth and made sure that he had at least one fan in the audience. Birthday boy Rich Hall's fan had followed him all the way from Australia, and she came with a cake, making sure that he had his cake and ate it. And then there was a mixed Anglo-American bill with the delightful Joe Caulfield and Mike Duggan, who was a pain in the ass. New Yorker Eddie Brill took time off from the David Letterman show to come to Paris for the first time and ended up one night playing in the sound gallery. That was a first. Ireland's award-winning Tommy Tiernan was back with wife and children. He was someone we always had time for. Adam Mills came with fellow Australian Kitty Flanagan and once he dealt with the bodyguard, he was ready to meet the ambassador of Australia, who invited him back for drinks in the residence. From the class of 95 in the erotica came comedy veteran Arnold Brown, along with Hattie Hayridge of Black Dwarf fame. Ben and Arn, aka Priority à Gauche, were a bit of a catch, and they managed to sell some merchandise to comedy stalwarts Claire and Alan Sawyer. Oh, and lest we forget, Danny Boy was there too. But this month's featured comedian, who in fact was standing in for Daniel Kitson. And so I went for the Aussie age option. I went for someone who was as far away from Barnsley as possible, from Australia. I was about the same age as Daniel Kitson six years ago. In fact, <laughs> which just goes to show he should have updated his website a little more often. He was 27 when I read it. He's 30 tonight. He's in the back of the room. He's waiting to come on. He's very, very funny. Expect a rough ride. Will you please welcome on stage Brendan Burns. number and all. Hello, it's nice to be in Paris. How are you guys doing? You alright? Excellent. It's fucking great here, isn't it? It's marvellous. Isn't it marvellous? And the thing is, I don't go into that whole thing that French people are rude. I don't buy that. I live in England. I do live in London. And uh, whenever I hear English people going, the French people are so rude, I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, do me a favour. What around London ask for directions in French and see how many fucking smiles you get? <laughs> <laughs> So if it caught you, that'd be weird. Mm. We'd never bring that up. So you look at that, he said, don't even think of going there. <laughs> <laughs> your boyfriend and girlfriend or brother and sister? Girlfriend. This is your, oh, this is your girlfriend. Oh, I'm so, fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no wonder he's <laughs> there. <laughs> so have you caught them? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> 
please don't tell me this is your girlfriend's parents and you're just meeting <laughs> <laughs> huh? First time meeting the parents. Good call, dude. <laughs> well, at least there's nowhere to go from here. <laughs> You've got to like the kid now. <laughs> Let's face it, you're there going, you know, you thought you were going to get a hard time tonight, son? I'm laying the fuck off you. <laughs> you're in my call book. Fuck my daughter senseless. Go nuts. <laughs> you're part of your family now, son. Your family. <laughs> so what are you doing catching him wanking then? What's <laughs> Dad just going, dude, come on! <laughs> if I could buy my friend a very stiff drink, that would be very good. What are you drinking? Pint, please. Pint, pint, please for the for the fella. Because he's going, pint, please. <laughs> oh my god! I really hope you know. I mean no disrespect. I'm really not picking on you. I think everyone in this room likes you a lot and feels for you. <laughs> A lovely couple. Well and I promise from now on I'm leaving you the fuck alone. <laughs> That's just so bad. <laughs> what a worst nightmare that is. <laughs> but my girlfriend's parents, that's always a stress, isn't it? Just um, me rocking up at your front door. <laughs> I am fucking your daughter. <laughs> I bet I'm not what you had in mind. <laughs> So what do you do for a living? Um, <clears throat> I'm a comedian. Really, what kind of stuff do you do? Well, I juggle. <laughs> no, really, do some of your stuff now. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, I love this job. This is a great job. This is a real treat of a gig, too, you know. So you come out here and it's... It, it, it feels very arty fatty. Thank you very much. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, point for the man. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Although I really do feel like I owe you so much more. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasant treat. This is. This is nice to do. You know what I mean? You get to spend some time. You muck around and so on. And people that, you know, obviously, you know, you're living in Paris. You could have gone to some art galleries or something. But you thought, no, I'll go and watch an Aussie yell cunt for an hour. That'll be, <laughs> that'll be art. Because uh, doing this job, you do get flack sometimes. You really do. You get shit. This is the only avenue of the entertainment industry where sometimes you get up on stage and you are there to amuse and entertain, and people just fucking hate you for it. It's true. You go, "Hi, good evening," and they go, "You're the reason I had a shit Christmas. Fuck off home, convict." <laughs> well, that happens to me more than others, obviously, right? <laughs> An example of this about two and a half years ago, actually we're coming up to three years ago nearly now. Um, no, in fact, no, it's still two and a half, actually, but it was about two days after the event, and I didn't know. I was the only comic in the land that hadn't been watching the news. Two days after the event, I get up on stage, no idea, open with, hey, Lady Diana, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everyone in the room went, don't you fucking dare! <laughs> And I'm going, what? 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 And they go, you can't, you can't, you can't! I go, what? What? Eventually someone pipes up and goes, she's fucking dead! Like, well, she's dead! <laughs> Shit, that's terrible! <laughs> Fuck, there goes my first ten minutes! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mother Teresa, right? <laughs> <laughs> And at that point, I was starting to feel a bit victimised. <laughs> I was thinking, this is uncanny. This is my life.